Welcome back to another MGM Paints video. Today we're going to tackle an ash waste nomad with a speed paint method. You can call it Zenithal, Slap Chop, Grisaille, or any other method, but the goal is to quickly get our miniatures painted to a tabletop standard. As you will notice, I'm not an artist, I'm just an average guy that enjoys sharing the hobby. So while I hope I, what I make is enjoyable, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, and that's okay. All right, we're gonna start off with a black spray on or paint on primer, choice is up to you. And a lot of people when doing this technique, they will use grays and kind of build up to a white. Instead, I'm gonna use an off-white, a sand type of color. Specifically, I'm using Vallejo Iraqi sand. You could also use a bone white, but I've just found that it gives a little brighter appearance to the model. I feel like when you're using a lot of grays, it tends to leave the model pretty dark. And when I'm using these lighter colors like this, it just tends to brighten the model up overall. Now there's a lot of places on this model where light is hitting, so I do take my time using a makeup brush. I work my way around. This takes about two minutes. When that step is finished, we go into a second dry brush, and this time I'm just using a pure white. I believe I'm using White Scar from the Citadel range, but you could easily use any white that you have available. Could be a craft paint. We're gonna go back over and really kind of focus on the higher areas but just trying to give it some additional variation of color from black to the sand color up to a white on the highest edges. Now the speed paint we're going to use tends to look the brightest and the best over white, so you can be pretty aggressive here. Again, I'm using a makeup brush and this took about two minutes. And with that finished, we can move directly into painting this model. And first I'm using the Army Painters Speed Paint Camo Cloak and I will be getting the legs and some pieces of the cloth underneath. There's a lot of cloth on this model, so I did want to give it some variation. So just using camo cloak on the most inside colors. Now when using speed paint, you do want to try to keep the paint where it's supposed to go. And that requires a little bit of brush control. If you happen to make a mistake, it's not a, that big of a deal. You could easily go back and touch it up with a little bit of white and then cover it up with a speed paint later. All right, the next speed paint we're gonna dip into is Pallid Bone. And this is gonna get the robe that he is wearing. So just along the front and also around the back. When I'm working with speed paints, I tend to start at the top where when you first apply the speed paint, it is kind of the thickest and then I start to draw that down to the bottom of whatever piece that I'm working on. So you can see that done here. You can, you've got a little bit of time to kind of play around with this and it works similar to a wash and you can kind of put it into the recesses as you see fit. But I start at the top, work my way down to the bottom. Up next, I will use Sand Golem, and I'm gonna get this piece, like a cloth or leather type of piece that is protecting him a little bit from the environment, I would say. And I'm gonna be using a lot of different speed paint colors in this. I will put a link in the description for the set that I purchased. All right, next we've got Grim Black, and for this, we are gonna be working on the innermost pieces the face as well as the hands. Looks pretty dark on the box, almost like a black or gray type of color, a very dark gray. So we will be using that color to quickly go over this, being careful not to get it on the eyes or the hose that's equipped to his mouth. Next, I'm gonna grab the Army Painter's Dark Wood Speed Paint and I will use this for the boots as well as some of the pouches and any straps, belt type areas. I'm gonna color some of these with a different color as well, just to give it some variation. When that's finished, I'm gonna go in with hardened leather to get some of the pouches I didn't get with dark wood, just to give it some variation on the model. As I work my way around too, I also notice places that I missed. So I still have pallet bone on my palette. I'm gonna go through and get some of these little straps and areas that I may have missed with one of the colors. That's one of the cool things about the speed paint is when they're on your palette, if you have at least two drops on there, 
it will be there for a pretty good amount of time. So if you miss something, just quickly clean your brush and you can go back and get those areas that you missed. Now we're going to turn our attention to these silver pieces. And I used Vallejo Natural Steel, and this probably was the bulk of the painting process. Once again, not using a speed paint, this is what takes the time in painting. So go over any bits that you want to be a metallic or silver, also any areas that you would want to be a bronze or a gold color. And I'll show you a trick for that here in just a minute. Now this is an older detail brush that I'm using. It's a bit small for the job, but you do want to use just an old worn out brush that still has somewhat of a tip when you're using metallics, just simply because the metallics will eat your brush. Overall, this process probably took about seven minutes to work my way around the model, finding all the silver bits and blocking those in. When this step is complete, I will work my way around, kind of tidying up some places. I did get the canteen on the front in hardened leather, I missed that. And then I'm going to use Gravelord Grey. This is another speed paint, and all of the silver I'm going to just go over with this Gravelord Grey color. And this is going to act like a wash. It is really going to pull into the recesses and make that metal look worn and older. I am also going to use this color on a lot of the tubing that this model has, as I don't want it to necessarily be black, I don't want it to be a metal type color, so this Gravelord Gray is going to go nicely over that, as well as the metallics, giving you two different colors. Now you may think that you are painting this on pretty thick, but if you just move it around a little bit, when it dries, it is going to dry with a nice finish. So even though you may feel like you're over applying it, it's not going to be a problem as when it dries, it's just going to have a nice worn look. Now with that step complete, we can really see our model starting to take shape and I'm going to grab the speed paint blood red, go in and get the eyes. And if you happen to cover over these in a previous step, it's okay. Just grab some white and dot those first. Blood Red is going to give you a very nice look on the eyes. I'm also going to grab some Prismatic Bolt, and I'm going to use this Prismatic Bolt to go over this tubing area that's on its mouth here and wrapping around the side. And with that complete, I'm going to go back and get the bottom of the staff here. I was unsure of what to make this color, if I wanted to go dark or if I wanted to make it like a leather color. I decided just to go with the palette bone, so I quickly go around and get that as well. Now for some of the areas that we wanted to be that bronze or gold type color, we painted those silver if you remember. I'm going to grab the speed paint hardened leather and I'm just going to go over those areas that we painted silver. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us that bronze type of look. From looking at the box art, this model does have several of these areas, so I just kind of reference that and work my way around. I've painted these areas at silver already, and you're perfectly fine to leave them that way, but again, hardened leather over the silver will give you a nice dark bronze type color. I finish up with some dark wood, just getting some straps over these cans here. And with that, this model would be ready to put on the table as it is, but we're going to go a step further here and go back in with some highlights. Our first highlight is going to be going back to that Vallejo Iraqi sand. Again, whatever sand color that you feel like is going to work here. And I'm just going to go over some of the higher areas. You can also correct any mistakes if something may have dried funky if you're working with a bigger surface. This is the perfect time to go back in and fix that up. You just want to try to avoid the recesses and leave that shaded area in. Now I believe that Army Painter also makes a color match for these colors, so that would certainly work well as well. And then you could go in with a bolder highlight on the edges. This work is all optional, but of course, if you decide to spend just a few extra minutes, and it doesn't take long to do, as you can see, I'm not being very precise with my highlights. I am just going in to give it a little bit of pop, and it will really go a long way with the finished product of your model. 
Next I've got a Vallejo Green Gray and you could use whatever lighter gray color that you want but I'm going to be going over those areas that we did in the Grim Black just trying to give a little bit of highlights to that so it's not completely flat. Next I have Vallejo Tan Earth and I go in and get some of the dark wood type of colors, the boots. And you could also use this to go across the hardened leather areas as well. Now there's a few things you can do when working with leather items like this, especially on the pouches. By using some short brush strokes along the bottom as you see here, you can simulate some wear and tear on these pouches and leather items. You can also put a few thin lines down the middle to simulate some folds in the leather. Okay, from here I get a soft dry brush and I go back into that Iraqi sand and I kind of work my way around the entire model here. And the reason for that is because I want this guy to feel like that he has been in the weather and I want him to have this weathered dirt sand kind of look. So you do want to use a soft dry brush here. If you use a hard dry brush, because we're going through this pretty quickly, the paint may not have had a full time to cure on the model. So you could potentially strip some of that off if you get a really hard dry brush and you get in there and start poking really hard. So I do prefer a soft dry brush here. And I'm just, again, going over all of the areas to give it a dusty appearance. And folks, there we have it. This was my first Ash Waste Nomad painting job that I did. This is the only one that I've got put together so far, but a ton of fun to paint. There's a lot of detail on these models. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, enjoyed seeing what these Army Painter speed paints can do. I think it's a great tool to have in your toolbox. I was a bit of a late adopter, but I am now a firm believer. The speed paints I used are genuinely a one coat solution for a model that just look good, but you can really elevate it and take it to another level when you start applying just a few highlights after that first coat. If you like this video or found it helpful, please do leave a thumbs up down below. I certainly appreciate you watching this video, especially if you've watched it this far. A big thank you to the supporters club. Your names are on the screen now. I really appreciate your support, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.